not ready yet. You are? Mm -hmm. Well, get ready. Okay. Um, sorry about that, folks. Um, hello, people. This is this is Bailey and and her and my dad. Um, and we are finally back with part two to the June Plant Adventure. Um, um, and I mean that was. It has been more than a month since part one, so, and like, we didn't have to write anything, we've just pr been procrastinating, so, um, here we are. <laughs> are you ready yet? Not really. By the way, we're eating lunch right now. Right. We're really recording? We're really doing this right now? Yes, we are. Okay, um... Well, uh... <laughs> so uh, I hope you want to pretend. Yeah, I'm really not ready yet. We, we can redo this if you want. Um, uh, I, I guess we can kind of wing it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I, I was already a little nervous about this because I'm... This is so open-ended, I don't really know for sure how this is going to go and, and how I'm going to manage it. And then on top of that, now I didn't even get to study up and prepare. So I'm just going to have to relax and see what happens. Hmm. All right. So where we last, last left our adventurers, they picked up uh, five uh, bandits who have joined their crew. And uh, they weren't very good bandits. <laughs> um, they've... Uh, one of the bandits is Scott. Who, no, it was four bandits and Scott. <laughs> all right, well, one of the five bandits is Scott. And uh, Scott is not familiar with Nash and, and Gemini, but uh, we know that from another adventure with some other characters. Um, she found her 10 fellow uh, crew who were uh, enslaved by uh, a gnome and a minotaur, and they were forced to work for these two at the circus. And... Um, but the problem was they had these collars uh, that the gnome controlled where uh, basically it would explode if you did the wrong things. So she offered the gnome money, which he accepted, and he's been kind of bored of the circus life. So now he and the Minotaur have joined our adventurer, our adventurers, which brings our total uh, little uh, ensemble including the two adventurers. We have uh, two, four, uh, 10 of her crewmates is 14. So we basically are at about 18 people right now. Mm -hmm. um, but hang on, I need to get another one. 19 people. 19 people, okay. Author, a disclaimer, no swearing, my channel is family friendly. Okay. All right. Would you like some apple juice? I, I don't care. All right. Maybe well, later. So, as I recall, where we left things, well, that was basically where we left things. <coughs> so we haven't quite started the trek toward um, the coast of Cloakwood. Um, which is where we happen to know from Can you the bring map. the map back? Huh? Can you bring the map back? Mm, the map. Um, so I've done a little bit more work on the adventure since we left things. And I thought instead of having to have a book, I printed up. Uh, unfortunately, I. I mean, it's even smaller than the book was. Yeah, I struggled with figuring out how to rotate it and make it bigger, but that's that's what we got. So we are currently. Map. You will never see it again. So we are currently right outside uh, Baldur's Gate, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been told that the June plant is currently owned and operated by a group of Bullywogs. Who have, uh, who are bringing a, um, a princess that they've kidnapped to, uh, a dragon in exchange for, uh, I think it was like 2,000 gold pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, that is, that exchange is supposed to happen off the coast of Cloakwood. 
um, which doesn't look too far away from where we are on the map, but it's actually 250 miles. Oh my goodness. And when you're on foot, that's a lot. <laughs> it's going to take a day. Um, actually, wait a minute. I just lied to you, and I lied to you guys too. It was 250 miles away from Mallory's hut in the wood of Shark Teeth. So Mallory is the green hag that told us where everybody is. Um, it's actually only 80 miles from uh, from Baldur's Gate. Okay, so hang on. If you've been on the channel for a while and you've seen my old videos uh, where I protested for animal rights, um, and you and if you're confused because I'm eating chicken nuggets now, these are vegetarian chicken nuggets. I am vegetarian. Okay, go on. <laughs> I told her they're vegetarian. Um, because they are. They are vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, um, I don't recall how many days it's going to take us to get there. This will take us more than a couple. So we'll see a few days. Before we actually start on the trek, um, is there anything that maybe we might find useful to supply ourselves with from the surface. The enchanted surface of wonder, which is basically going out of business because we're taking all the workers and... And what kind of things do they have? Well, um, I would like you to do the creative work. Uh, okay. What kind of things that you might think, well, what would a circus might have? What was that? Um, that was the cover to, uh, we're also in the middle of taking our Christmas tree down, finally. Um, so that was the cover to one of the storage containers that just took them down. Yeah, you're off camera right now. So, are there any, like what, when you think about a typical surface, is there anything you think, you think might be useful? And if not, that's fine. I'm not, there's not anything that I'm hinging this whole adventure on. Wait, is this a traveling circus? It's a traveling circus with animals. Um, we know that there's 20. Bollywogs that are going to be on the, the ship right now, and we're going to have to somehow deal with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a way to negotiate with them. Well, first of all, if we're I, going to fight them. Well, first of all, I think that um, I think it might be good for transportation to use some of that stuff. I agree. Um, It might be a little outlandish, but what if we took the surface cover, uh, um, the surface cover, and we used it as a net to capture the blue ones? Mm. <laughs> All right, so we'll take the surface cover. I like that idea. Um, so maybe we'll take uh, some of the carts and other things that they use to transport things. Hang on, I realized it was missing something. Hang on, I did not get any dice. Um. Which one of you would like to use? Uh, no, I'm going to use my dumb dice. I'm going to use my mini dice because I won't be better than the other day. Oh. That 20 you rolled the other day? Don't worry, I didn't, I didn't ignore it. <laughs> okay, there, I have dice now. Do you? All right. Yeah, I decided today that I might speed things up to think what happens. To roll multiple dice at the same time. Oh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to experiment with that. Um. All right. So we got the the, the, the tent cover. Uh, we're going to grab the carts and other things used for transportation. Um. And then. And then the last thing is: there any like dangerous animals that this circus is keeping? Well, wait, no, I guess it's going to be on the ship, so we want to protect the ship. 
Never mind. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I mean, they definitely got animals. I mean, sorry, they definitely have like uh, lions and stuff like that. Yeah, there's there's uh, like lions, bears, elephants. Uh, elephants is a big thing. Um. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't like the animals idea. Like, I guess it's kind of all. All right. So, so we take the things that we might find useful. I mean, some of these animals we're going to need anyhow just to pull the parts and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, so it takes a few days, so we finally arrive to the coast of the Coco. And then we decide, you know what? This would be a good time to get a drink of water. I'm assuming that that's not what we really decide. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Hang on. Ah. Is that what we really decided? 18. Mean. Okay, this is what we really decided. <laughs> Alright. So we've got about 19 of us, including this really cool minotaur. What is this giant baby? Did you say it was something like three? Yeah, I don't think I was right about that. Mm. That is what I said. The challenge rating is all right. Well, I don't want to slow down the uh, the video here. Okay, the minotaur challenge rating is oh, it is three. This could be useful. So, so we arrive at the coast. Uh, Probably around, uh, let's see. Now you're doing it, then I don't have none of the, uh, those probably on camera. <laughs> so you better get good at editing your video. <laughs> uh, so, um, we arrived, let's say around noon, okay? And uh, we know that Kronos, the dragon that the Bully Wolves have made uh, their deal with, He's expected, based off what we were told from Mallory, uh, the dragon should show up to complete the deal uh, the next evening. Mm -hmm. So we have the rest of today and most of tomorrow to commandeer the ship uh, before the, the dragon is there. Yeah. Um, we get to the coast, we look around, you know, there's a, a few, just like in the movies, in the TV shows, there's a couple of boats, more like rowboats than anything. They're just kind of like left there in the coast. People probably use them for fishing and that sort of thing. We see the uh, the June plant, which is the reminder that's the name of the ship that Javanith is trying to recapture. And it's it's off. Uh, we can see it, but it's definitely something that, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to just board it directly. We're going to have to uh, take it some of these rowboats or, or something to find some way of getting out there. So what is, uh, what is the plan, man? What do we want to do? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> to be honest. <clears throat> Can I just roll and see, and see if it's the right thing? <laughs> well, uh, like I said, I left this pretty open-ended. Um, I didn't know if we would want to negotiate with them. Maybe double the size of the crew. I didn't know if we wanted to take this by force. Um, we do have. Should we go over who's on your crew? See if any of their special abilities may be of use to us. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we have 10 people. We have Ravenclaw, who was the previous captain. He's a dwarf. We have a Krom, who was the former first mate. Krom is, did I say we have a Krom? He's, uh, he's a Goliath. But for whatever it's worth, I, I basically, these guys are all basically going to have the stat blocks. Wait, I just, I just had an idea. All right. What if, uh, what if we threaten them to sue, and if, and if they didn't bite and we would sue them, that Zelda was the rightful heir, and, she, and the only reason she didn't get the ship is because 
is because she did, didn't have, uh, it's because she wasn't of accessible age and stuff like that. Yeah, proper representation. Yeah. <laughs> No adaptation without representation. <laughs> so, <laughs> just do them. Um, all right. So, I mean, basically, we have a dwarf, we have a Goliath. Uh, although, again, as a stat block, so basically, between these guys, all are bandits. Um, we got some twin elves. We have a fairy, so she can fly, although uh, she can fly very strong. Uh, we have an Aracopra. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. Aracopra, Aracopra. So he can fly. Uh, we have a human. We have a halfling bard. So we do have a musician in the group. Uh, we have a changeling. That could be useful, maybe. And then, oh, we have a female high elf who's uh, particularly beautiful. And uh, she happens to also have the friend's hand trick. All right. I want to see them. You want to see that? <laughs> well, I want to start this. Uh, first, I want to. Well, first, I want to see if if I can um if we can do this without any threatening like uh, like um uh, like like I like I kind of want to roll charisma to see if I can convince them to to hand the ship over. So what's the plan? You think like we'll take one of the rowboats? I don't know if we can fit. Even in the two or three rowboats that are there, I don't know for sure. What do I want to say? Alexa, how many people can fit in a large rowboat? Large robot. <laughs> she is so useful. <laughs> Alexa, how many people can fit in a large rowboat? Dad, <laughs> you do realize that um, that anybody who's watching the video that has an Alexa nearby will now be <laughs> having the same. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, hey Siri, how many people can fit in a large rowboat? Just tell me. That's a lot larger than the five. Um, all right, let's do this. Let's just say, uh, hypothetically, that we can fit six people in a rowboat. There's at least three or four rowboats. So we could probably fit, uh, let's just say that we can cram everybody into the three rowboats. So is your plan that we're all going to just show up? We're going to grab the rowboats and uh, approach the June plant all at the same time. Yeah. Do we want to have one of the rowboats approach? And you're going to let them know that you plan on uh, on uh, pressing charges if they don't hand the boats over. Uh, do I'm you want? Here. Do you, are we going to have anybody act as if they're your lawyer? Wait, are these bully ones like? Am I allowed to know like their their alignment? Um, they are typically the stuff is so small. They are neutral evil. Neutral evil. Mm -hmm. Okay then. Then uh, then yep. faking being lost at is lost at sea probably won't work. <laughs> How do I get off of the boat? I don't know. Oh, this is about the end of the show. Okay, I feel much better now. What should I do? Well, would you like me to throw out some ideas? Well, what if I go up to them and ask for an appointment with their leader? Would that oh. be like a persuasion check? Um, okay. Is that what you 
Is that the direction you want to go? Yep. Are you going to go out there? Um, are we cramming everybody into three rowboats? We all up there at once, or do we want to uh, kind of hide the fact that we have larger numbers with us? I, I just want to tell us and match go. Do we want? Uh, no, I want Dylan and Smash, the gnome, and the minotaur to go. Okay. Do we want the rest of the crew to maybe roll around to the other side of the gym plant? And maybe we'll distract them from one side where they're talking, but have the other guys ready to go. Um, no, I, I guess I just want to. Do we try to do it? So, do we, oh, so if you're thinking maybe we'll negotiate, depending on how that goes, we'll use force later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're going to do persuasion check to ask for an appointment with our leader. All right, so you said it's going to be Nash? It's going to be Nash, Jelinek, the Minotaur, and the Gnome. All right, and the Minotaur's name is... I forgot. Mir. How would you pronounce M-I-R? Is it Mir? All right, we're going to go with the... Uh... We're going to go with Mir. And the gnome's name is Dimbomoggin Higglebottom. I was looking forward to playing this adventure for so long. I know. So <laughs> then I can not remember it. Mm-hmm. All right. Dimbomoggin Higglebottom, Mir, Nash, and Jelinek. Mm-hmm. Uh, go out in the boat. All right. We're going we're to row up. Uh, as we get closer, uh, a few uh, Bollywogs kind of uh, peer over the side. And as a refresher, uh, they basically look like giant frogs. I didn't know they were giant. I thought they were kind of like small. I mean, not like as small as a frog, but. Yeah, how, how big are they? I mean, when I say giant, when I, I don't mean that they're the size of a giant, but they are, you know, I'm going to stop trying to read the small stuff. It's going to something my eyes can handle. <laughs> I think they're basically humanoid size. Oh, they are? Mm-hmm. I thought they were like. Boy, I, I, I thought that they were like, I invented them as being like bigger than a normal frog, but still small. Are you kidding me? I do not have bully wolves to be that They're like the main thing here. Okay. That is so surprising. I'm to going me. to go get my phone. <laughs> okay. Tag, bandit, green lock, minotaur. I am not well prepared for this. Young green dragon. I didn't happen to accidentally hand it to you when um, I gave you the uh, the map, right? Nope. All right, I'm going to have to double check later and see where... Uh, that is not printed or what? That is surprising. Okay. All right, yeah. now, now I'm stuck using this thing. Holy log. I already forgot what I was checking. I want to check in the size, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're medium humanoid size. Yeah. So they're going to be bigger than a half man for sure. So at the smallest, they're the size of a door. Um, yeah, I kind of expected that. Okay. Yeah. Like, I kind of expected, like, dwarf to be a normal size. Mm. All right, I was picturing them to be about human size. Mm. Maybe a little bit shorter, maybe five inches shorter. Mm. But, but a little bulkier. Let's do so. Persuasion check for the for the meeting of the leader. Okay, so uh, what are you going to say? Let's, let's, let's role play this a little bit. We roll up. They're looking at us. Uh, they don't... Stop! What do you want? Uh, I I guess I just say, hey, I would uh, I would like a meeting with your leader. I, I mean I I short short and so, short and to the point. <laughs> Who are you, and why should we waste our time with you? I'm only fifteen. Is that good enough? <laughs> That's what John <Jonathan> said. <laughs> Okay, uh... Uh, who are you? I have some of you. How about... What about... I am Jelena, right full of air to the, to the June fan. Now, now may I please have a meeting with your leader? Alright, so there's a little... You hear a little bit of mumbling, and then they kind of disappear, and then you see uh, another bully wood come up to the, uh, the edge of the ship. It says, I am the captain of the ship. Why are you bothering us? I'm going to have to roll another situation check for him. No, we're role playing. I'm trying to take a new approach where I don't necessarily roll for everything. Mm-hmm. Like, what if you give this great speech? And I'm like, okay, let's roll. And we got the one. 
But what if you get a crummy speech? There's no reasonable whatever on earth that you should be successful when they get a 20. So I'm trying to, uh, I want to say not use the dice at all, but uh, I'm trying to let it be more, I'm trying to let the results be more influenced by what actually happens. Okay. Um. Basically, based off of the speech you give, I'm going to set some sort of difficulty level. Oh, okay. So if you give me an amazing speech, then the difficulty level it's is going to be, be low. pretty low. Okay. Um, I am John, the, the rightful heir to the ship. The reason it was sold in an auction is because at the time, at the time the ship was given away, I was uh, I was too young to be uh, to be able to claim it. But now I, but now I am older. Uh, and I would like to cl uh, claim the ship. I don't know, something to that effect. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me a uh, persuasion check. Fourteen. What right. was the difficulty level? <laughs> uh, I'm going to make the difficulty level... Uh, I don't want to tell you. Uh... Okay, I know what I know what I picked. Do you have any sort of uh, modifiers or anything? Are you proficient? Dang it, dang it. Would fourteen have been enough to pass the last thing? Because I forgot that I had a minus one charisma and my a modifier. Would it be enough to pass what? Um, the the last roll I did. Which last roll? With the with the crew, and now I'm talking to their leader. Oh, uh. Oh, honestly, I think I ignored your roll. I was just going to ask. Okay. So I rolled a, a 14 minus 1 equals 13. Okay. Um, if there's any reason we should do something other than persuasion that you could talk me into, uh, that would be more advantageous. Okay. Like, what are you uh, proficient in? Athletics, medicine. Um, perception, religion, and survival. Oh, honestly, I, I was lost in my own mind. Oh, come saying? on. <laughs> Athletics, medicine, per um, perception, religion, and survival. But also, I have a plus two with the modif modifier, so I'm, so I'm good on pretty much everything with them. Uh, charisma, is the, charisma is the only modifier that I have negative. <laughs> All right. So uh, the captain goes, oh. well, little girl, we Bullywogs are certainly known for appreciating the order of law, so we will certainly give you back your boat, right, guys? And um, there's a lot of laughter. And, uh, and he goes, Go away, little girl. Stop wasting our time. Okay. Um, and then, and then she'd say, "Well, if well, if you do not give me this ship right now, I will sue you and uh, and tell you where and tell the uh, I will sue you and tell the police where uh, um where you where you are." The funny thing about boats. Little girl, he's trying to use it like a The funny thing about boats, little girl, is they move. And then a spear comes uh, hurtling. You're going to see who throws it. And uh, let's see. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, luckily it doesn't hit anybody on the boat. So, uh, yeah, I don't think these guys are interested in. Uh, giving you the vote, and they don't seem to be too scared of uh, having to go to court. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like if we stick around, uh, we're going to become shish kebabs. Okay. What, what if... Okay, I whisper to... Um, I whisper to... Dingle bottom, I mean, tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> tickle. Yeah, I, 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 I whisper to pig, pig. I'm a horrible, I'm a horrible DM, I have to look it up too. It's, uh, Dimble. I, I Dimble bog and Higglebog. I will whisper, 
I whispered to Jim. That's that's his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I whispered to Jim, bring the cover out. <laughs> bring the cover out. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the liberties of uh, installing a plan that we haven't we actually never discussed. So, um, even though you didn't agree to this, uh, some of the crew, while we were discussing uh, things with the uh, uh, very uh, jovial uh, Bullywugs, uh, but also not very cooperative, uh, while they were talking to us on one side of the ship, uh, two, robo two rowboats filled with former bandits, pirates, and circus workers are uh, approaching the June plant from the other side. And then we hear a flapping of wings, and uh, an akokra and a fairy fly up to the side with a giant circus tent cover. Uh, it does seem like the akokra is really the only one carrying it. And the, the fairy's kind of really more hanging off for her dear life. Uh, actually, I say her. I'm being influenced by uh, Tinkerbell and assuming all fairies are female. I think uh, the fairy, the name is Dash. Oh, man, I'm such a genderist. Uh, Dash is a female. So, all right, so our female fairy Dash is just barely Isn't hanging on. You know, like, charge people with their beauty? Huh? Isn't she the one who charge people with their beauty? Oh, no, you're thinking of the uh, high elf. Uh, Ariel Enduin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she can trick people into believing that uh, they are uh, her friend. Mm -hmm. uh, but once they realize that they've been uh, duped, they are typically uh, unhappy about it. And then didn't you say that she just brings out the, um, she just brings out the Minotaur? No. Nope. Not the Minotaur. It's, um, let me see, it's who is it? Yeah, the Goliath Krom. Um, is usually watching things. They were basically pulling kind of a, a con back when they were at the circus, right? She would wander around and basically try to tr try to charm the rich men uh, to just handing over their money. And then on the very rare occasion when she got caught and they were upset about it, Krom would step in and use the guys to uh, you know, intimidate these, these guys and okay. uh, rescue her. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yes, Ariel Enderwin is a beautiful female high elf. What did, what did the fairy do? Oh, so the fairy, her name is Dash. Uh, so it says, a fairy, Dash runs the games at the carnival. Dash feels important to finally be in charge of something as she is accustomed to not being taken seriously due to her small stature. So, Honestly, I think while nobody likes being enslaved, I think some of the your former crew members did enjoy certain parts of their jobs. At the, uh... Wait, hang on, I gotta go something. All right. This is a little bit. This is a little guy. It's nothing big. Nothing to do with D&D. By the way, I don't know what happened to the, uh, the stat block for the Bullywugs. I will figure that out later. But you don't have it anymore. <laughs> but, well, yeah, part of me is wondering if I just didn't put it in this adventure at all, which would be That's very confusing. surprising. Yeah, because they're like going to be the main person on by. Or, or from. <laughs> There'd be like J.R.R. Tolkien was writing something that he was writing his uh, you know, The Lord of the Rings, and somebody says, "What about the, the Hobbits?" And he's like, uh, "What Hobbits?" You know what I mean, like this is kind of the main part of the, the deal here. So uh, I did ask some other things. As you may recall, didn't you get some sort of a wand? The wand of oh, Web. Oh yeah, I did. So you have that, and uh, what I'm saying is I, I added some of the uh, stats in here. So if you needed it, it says the wand has seven charges, 
While holding it, you can use an action to expend one of its charges to cast the web spell with a DC of 15 from it. Um, and so obviously that raises the question, what is the web spell? Hello, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, I think he's already uh, smiting. I'm, I'm become, I've become smitten. Uh, and I thought I was all proud of myself that I then jotted down the web spell. Um, but... Did you not? Man. I, uh... Man, I did not do that. I was so proud of myself. And uh, now I see clearly that I've done uh, not a great job. Alright. Well, I can look up what the web spell is. But you got it. Uh, it's basically used to enable people. So, how does the circus network? All right. So I'm going to say that uh, I don't want to do this. Let's just do this. We're going to say that um, we need to get everybody on board. I'm assuming we're engaging the combat at this point. Um, at the same time. Some of the uh, the Bullywugs are now struggling because uh, they're they got this big heavy circus uh, tent over them, um, and the ones that are uh, not under the tent um, are otherwise distracted. Uh, Getting their friends to yes. out of the tent. So uh, I think under normal circumstances, we should probably do some sort of a roll to uh, see how easily we all get into the boat. Uh, I'm just going to say that the... Let's roll. That the distraction... Let's roll. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, now what are we rolling for? We're going to see how easily everybody gets into the boat um, without taking damage. We're, we can, we're going to roll at advantage because... Um, They're all distracted. Yeah. And let's do... I'm going to let your roll... Um, Cover all of us. Mm -hmm. So, what is, uh, let's see, we could either do a strength or an acrobatics. Uh, no, no, let's, yeah, let's either an, uh, an athletics or not possibly even an acrobatics check. I think it's just for athletics because I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, athletics is what I'm proficient in. You're proficient in it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could add plus two and then what, do you have any kind of strength modifiers? Uh, let's see, that's strength. No. No, okay. So let's see. I rolled a. Let's see. So I rolled a thirteen plus two is fifteen. All right. So I want to say it says the DC of fifteen, and we get to roll an advantage. But didn't you tell me you rolled a thirteen plus two? Oh right, right. I forgot that. That counts. That counts. Okay. Okay. Thirteen plus fifteen. It's I mean, not fifteen. Not plus. <laughs> Twenty-eight. That is quite the roll. Plus two. All right, so everybody's on board. Um, I guess for the time being, let's see uh, what percentage of uh, the the crew are underneath the tent. So I'm gonna let you. What does that mean? Um, roll a, roll me a twenty sided die. They have twenty people in the crew. Whatever you roll, that's who's underneath the tent. Cover. Nine. Nine. All right. So nine people are underneath the, uh, nine Bullywugs are underneath the cover. We have 18 of us. Um, how do I want to do this? I'm going to treat, uh, here's how I want to do this. Because the gnome, the, the owner, uh, Dimble Mog and Higglebottom is, Nothing special. I think he's going to just have like the bandit stat block. Uh, but the minotaur. He's going to have minotaur stat block. Yes. So I think how I want to do this is I'm going to have. Um, you and I and the minotaur, we're going to be a focus. All right. And then um, we'll handle everybody else separately. Okay. So I want to put G for Nash. Uh, J for Jonathan, 
And for Mayor? My favorite little charmer, it's now time to be easy. Alright. And we have we have nine bully wugs. And we'll just call them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right? Uh, I mean, what thought their parents put into their name, right? Okay. Such majestic numbers. Um, my hit points are four plus two. What are your hit points? Probably the rest of yours. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. So how much hit points did you have? Uh, fifty-four. But I'm a paladin. Wow. <laughs> but still, fifty-four is a lot. Did, did we not have a minotaur, uh, you know, whatever. I did pronounce the stat block for that. Ooh, 76. You put me to shame. Uh, my armor class is 16. What is your armor class? Let's see. My armor class would be 14. Fifteen. No, I'm I'm giving him a phone in D twenty, so he's in his pants in store or store. He's always gonna roll under a twelve. Mwaha! It's the perfect scheme. <laughs> All right. You yeah, know how much do we we have? What? Uh, one, two, three. That's a nineteen, right? Uh, so crew. Uh, do the bandit stat block. I think at some point, is, do you know how to edit your videos yet? I don't know what editing service, but I haven't really gotten used to getting out of the computer yet. But at some point, my suggestion would be that during the combat sequences, you can kind of take out the, the like, um, like this part. Yeah, me writing stuff down is probably not good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got the little charmer. We got our favorite little charmer. Whatever. Do you guys want to miss our favorite little charmer? No, you guys don't want to miss our favorite little charmer, right? Yeah. All right, let's roll for. Oh, oh wait a minute. Uh, yeah, let's roll for an there. Our favorite little charmer. Are you okay? I'm taking it. I'm hearing silence. I'm, I'm picking up five. This is seven. Seven. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Dang it, Dad, you got my hopes up. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Nash gets to go first. I was hoping to review uh, what he could do uh, before. Uh, uh, we started, so uh, I don't, I didn't get the chance to do that, so how do I want to do this? All right, I think I'm just going to attack with my trusty old uh, great sword, okay? So now it's, he's ready to go to town, he's going to start swinging like it's baseball season. And he just he just starts charging toward the nearest bullywugs and starts swinging. So he swings at the first one uh, overhand, and uh, perhaps perhaps he was a, a little too excited because uh, he swings overhand and misses. But he does get a second attack, and this time he uh, he goes with his backhand um, and. Four. And this time he lands a hit. All right. So let's speed things up and adjust. Uh, let's see. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So, uh, well, you get to roll two sixes. With the great sword. I did. I did. So. Uh, while that bully wug that he ran into first was, ex 
Uh, currently, there's nine who are not trapped underneath the tent cover. I don't know if how many are trapped underneath the tent, the tent cover. You are correct. I messed up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Either way, uh, that first bullywug sighed a big sigh of relief when, when Nash totally whipped with his overhand. Uh, he didn't say much on the backhand because uh, he, he, now, he was now now bullywug heaven or itchy double hockey sticks. I don't know if you guys are two people. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. So there's, there's ten left. They're next. An initiative. How do I want to do this? I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Just cut out all these dice. <laughs> no, I think I'm finally ready to throw out some of these labels. All right. 20 sided die, 20 sided die, 20 sided die, 20 sided die, 20 sided die. Is that five? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Um, okay. Down the paper again. Okay, so um, so one of the Bobby Woods, uh, who was previously, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have these guys go at, at uh, disadvantage because they're probably still distracted by the uh, the uh, the tent. So two of them. All right. So uh, in ex in the exchange, one of them does manage to make contact. With oh, with me. Oh, oh I got plenty of hit points. Come at me, bro. Yeet. Come at me. Yeet. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, no, he doesn't get hit. Uh, all right. Whoop, whoop. Why does this have to be so small? Why does it have to be so small? Okay, so first he tries to bite me. Really? I got a great sword. And you're gonna try to bite me. <laughs> Okay, one D four plus one. Uh, so I lose four points of damage from his bite, and while he's while he's got his teeth sunk into my my arm, he then decides to attack me with a spear, and he does uh, three damage. So I've now taken uh, seven points of damage. So I'm at uh, all right. So, uh, gentlemen, if he's up next. Spell information to can troops. It needs second level spells, first level spells, need second level spells. Okay, um, let's see. I think I want to use a spell called Calm Emotions. 
Okay. Um, Tell me what it, what it does. Okay, so first off, the duration is as long as you can concentrate, and it says up to one minute, which we know is 10 turns in battle. Yeah. Um, so that means that if I if I attack again, the spell would end, right? Because I'm still all concentrating? Um, I think... I think you can attack again, but if somebody damages you, that breaks your concentration. Okay. Um, okay. And then... And, and, wrong, we'll figure it out later. and then you attempt to... Uh, uh, to suppress strong, uh, strong emotions in a group of people, each hu and each humanoid in, in the twenty foot radius, to, uh, um, in a twenty foot radius sphere, sphere centered on a point you choose within range, uh, must ma uh, make a charisma saving throw. A creature can uh, can choose to fa fail the saving throw if it wishes. If it wishes, if a creature uh, fails its saving throw, choose one of the following two effects. It says you can suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened. When this spell ends, any suppressed effect resumes, uh, terms pr uh, provided that its duration has not expired in the meantime. So what does that mean? Like, can I see it real quick? I, 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 I just saw that it, that it was fine. I was like, well, that might be useful. Yeah, but I, now that it says suppress any effect, like, is that getting rid of it? I don't know. So we're talking about which spell? Calm emotions? emotions? Mm -hmm. Do you have it prepared? On your spell sheet, because um, sometimes you have spells that you know, but you don't have them prepared. Like you have to study them each day. I'm pretty sure a druid doesn't have that. Oh. I mean, I'm not a druid. I'm a, I'm a cleric. I'm pretty sure clerics don't have to do that. But yeah, it's on your list. So you have to suppress strong emotions and give each other. Oh, so this, you can suppress any effect causing it. Yeah, so this would calm people down. Um, but it's for, it's, it's causing it to be like charmed or frightened. What's that all about? Well, I said you can suppress. You know what suppress means? Like stop? Yes. So you can suppress any effect that is already causing a target to be charmed or frightened. Oh! So I, I, I think that's probably the main benefit. Like, let's say a dragon is thrown over its head and everybody's frightened and like frozen stiff. I think this one would calm emotion. Would be useful to calm everybody down. Okay, so never mind. I thought that was like causing the shot to come to Okay. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Do better. Yeah. Eleven. That would be a cantrip. Okay. One, two. Daily <laughs> Two. Sacred flame. I'm pretty sure that can damage people. It sounds like something that's useful. Flame with radiance descends on a, uh, on a creature that you can see within range. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage. The target gains no benefit for, uh, from cover for, for this saving throw. Um, the spell's damage increases by 1d8 when you reach 5th level, 2d8, um, 11th level, 3d8, and 17th level, 4d8. So I believe I have not gotten to... Um, You're 7th level, aren't you? Yeah, so that would just mean 2d8. Oh, so it's not even a matter of, like, what spell slot, it's just if you at that level. It's cantrip. Oh, oh, sweet. Okay, so you can roll... And the target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage, which would be 2d8 for, for me. Yeah, can I, uh, can I see it? Uh, just because there was a lot of information. Like, I need to figure out. Uh, Alright. It sounds like you have to pick one specific target, right? Mm -hmm. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8. Oh, yeah, the target means no benefit. Cover from the same throw. And you're saying you can do 2d8. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, so a dexterity saving throw. Alright. Uh, okay. Oh. This guy's definitely taking damage. Did you roll on that one? Uh, no, not quite, but it was a 2. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He does have a plus 1 dexterity. Uh, 
Oh, what would the dexterity saving be against? Can I see it again real quick? A dexterity saving throw. This is the target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or, or take 1d8 radiant damage. I'm wondering if it's against your, um, your spell save DC. My spell save DC is it's 13. It's going to be more than 3, right? It's 13, yeah. 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 Alright, I don't know if we're running this properly, but he's definitely taking damage. So 2d8. Come on, come on, wait. If you don't shake it hard enough, you're not going to get a high roll. Wait, I'm going to get the other dice that we have this game. Here we go. The one that everybody in school uh, hopes I see for. So, we have a little less than two hours. A little less than two hours. It's okay if we don't finish this. We can just make a part three. Ah, uh, yes. Clickety clacky die. Three. You failed me. A six and a three. That's a nine. Okay. I thought you rolled good. You failed me. Maybe it was only your twenty sided brother. <laughs> okay. So uh today. Um, right. I already kind of took care of the rest of our crew and their their damages. Uh so we're basically, we've taken out two. Oh, oh, I, I just got to that so Did we, you get literally all of your dice sets out? Uh, I, I, there might be one I left. I'm not sure. Did I get them all? I, no, I think I left them behind. No, you got them all. You got them all. All right. Uh, okay. So, let's see. What are those noises? Oh, you're such a good kid. I think I'll keep you around. <laughs> Alright, so Mayor, uh, he's he is so excited to finally be in combat again. We didn't really get to fight a lot when he was hopping out of the circus. And they generally discourage fighting in prison as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, was he in prison? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he met, he met, the, he met them in prison. Yeah, that's where he and Dimble Mog and Wiggle Bottom met. Yeah. So they became BFFs. Beast friends forever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to pull up something clever. Kind of All right. So he is about to use his great axe. Uh, he's, he's just going to swing at the closest. Uh, uh, what are these again? Bullywogs? Bullywogs? And I feel bad for that bullywog because I'm pretty sure this guy's about to die. Uh, all right. So he, he definitely hits one. And he does uh, two. Uh, well, he kills the thing. He just cuts the the, the bullywog's head off. So, so at the end of the round, our present situation is that we are all still doing okay. Nash is taking a little bit of damage. I crave magic powder collection. I crave you. The uh, the of the eleven bullywogs who are not trapped underneath the uh, the the tent. Um, three of them are now completely dead. So that. But did I kill the guy that I attacked? Huh? I did not kill the guy that I attacked, did I? He's not looking good. He's okay. probably not going to be around for much longer. Okay. Um, uh, so basically, the Bollywoods, there, there's, uh, what's the math here? What's 11 minus 3? It's 8. So there's 8 Bollywoods who are left. One of them who is looking like he's on the verge of bleeding to death. And they're looking around, they're assessing the situation. Huh? On our side, um, the numbers are pretty large. There's... Wait, are you saying everybody gets turned? Yeah, that's why I, I had to be creative in how I'm handling combat. So I didn't, I didn't really 
control for everybody. I mean, I kind of did. I'm not going to explain all the mechanics. Um, so anyhow, short version is that the only person who's taking damage on our side is, is Nash. Uh, and it wasn't a lot. In fact, if anything, it just seems to have uh, invigorated him. He's, he's feeling the thrill of battle. Uh, so that, that seems to have backfired. Meanwhile, there's now three bunny wugs who are dead, and one who looks like, unless he receives medical attention, he's probably going to die pretty soon. So these guys are looking around, um, and uh, one of them, the captain, goes, okay, all right, fine, fine, let's, let's talk, let's talk. Uh, we're, how about if, uh, what if we just join forces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's. How about we join forces? We're we're good hard workers. Uh, we might be a little bit evil. You look like you might be a little bit evil. I am. <laughs> he says that to the gentleman. He's a little uncomfortable around uh, the orc. Frankly, he's not sure uh, why or how the big ugly orc seems to be friends with the uh, the drow. Uh, but. At this point, he's desperate because he's doing the math. Um, and those numbers aren't looking too good. Right, right. And they're still struggling getting the rest of his crew. Maybe it would have been different if they had their full forces, but almost half their crew is, is currently trapped underneath a circus tent, as far as you can tell, which he thinks is odd uh, because they're out in the middle of the water right now. So, what does Jalen do? Are we going to just slaughter all these guys? Are we going to push them off the boat? Are we going to, I mean, can we so trust how them? This, how would this agreement work to work together? Um, so they're not going to be your slaves, but uh, you basically have a crew of, part of your crew would be made up of these bubbly ones. And what about the dragon? Uh, well, we can talk about that. We have currently a, um, a princess that's been kidnapped on board. Um, there could be an opportunity for money here, right? We could continue with the exchange. We could go and meet this dragon, give him the princess. Uh, now that Jelmeth is of an age where she, um, now that Jelmeth is of an age where she could be arrested, um, she, she does, I mean, where she could end up in prison. She she doesn't really want to to do that. She doesn't want to like so so I'm saying that this agreement would not work if we were to go through with delivering the princess to the dragon. Alright, so she wants to is she going to accept the offer of uh the Bodhi Wugs to, to join her her crew? I'm assuming she wants the whole point of her taking the dream plan, she wants to, to use it, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that would also imply she's following the new crew, which is part of why she rescued her existing crew. Um, she would have a pretty decently sized crew at this point uh, because she has, I don't know if Nash counts as part of the crew, uh, but I believe we counted there were 19 of us, including Jelena, and now we could have another uh, 16 or 17 Bullywoods join us depending on whether or not they're going to go. This one probably looks fast enough. Uh, so yeah, so they could join us. I don't really know about this. I don't really like the plan of joining. All right. Um, well, so what does she want to do? So we're in the heat of battle, keep in mind that we probably didn't call like a timeout. We all kind of, you know, we're probably like gathering around at the football huddle. Okay, guys, there's a situation. Um, they want to join us. I'm not comfortable with this. Uh, what do you want to do? Break on ten. <laughs> so, so you're gonna have to make a choice. Um, we could let them join. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to proceed with uh, the exchange of the princess. Let's keep in mind that technically Jamanet is evil. I, I almost feel like we could do like a double. Uh, in, in wrestling, they call it a double turn. When you have a heel on a face, go into a match, a heel doesn't mean to a bad guy, a face is a good guy. But 
things happen throughout the course of the match where by the end, the one who was the face is now a heel, and the one who was the heel is now the face. There have been times I've wondered if it'd be a lot better if, uh, if Nash just went evil. And it sounds like they're hearing from you. I'm not hearing the evil uh, intentions over there. Either way, we gotta figure well, out. It's just, we haven't seen the one exactly kissing, but if she, but if she thinks she's gonna run away with it, then she'll. Hmm. Why uh, not? <laughs> all right. So what about and again? If you want she's evil, what are we gonna do with these Bowie ones? Are we gonna join them? Are we are more? Like, we let them join us? Are we gonna let them think they're joining us and then we, we stab them in the back later? Do we just? Slaughter them all since right now it seems like it'd be pretty easy to see that. Do we want to um, uh, just force them to, um, to jump off the ship? I would, I would say something like if you would, if you do not want to be slaughtered, uh, then, um, then get into the robots and leave immediately. All right, so, um. And by the way, I do not accept the deal. <laughs> I, I didn't make that clear. Did I? Yeah. So they they kind of look at each other and uh, say, "Okay, all right, fine, fine. You can have your ship back." Uh, frankly, it kind of smelled anyway. And, <laughs> um, so they start. Uh, they're so kind of startled and scared. They they, they just start to to go toward the rowboats. Um, they forget about their compatriots that are stuck underneath the tent. <laughs> oh, no. uh, how do you want to handle that? It just doesn't have to be a big deal. You can just say, are you, aren't you forgetting something? Or, or you can be like, whatever, you can kill the other ones later or now. I'm wondering what's going on in that little head of yours. What are you contemplating? What I forget. Something particularly evil. <laughs> I don't really care if the other guy. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, so in other words, you're gonna let these eight or whatever that are remaining exit the boat, and then the ones that are. Maybe just starting to poke their heads out from underneath the tent and finally getting out. If they can make it to the robot in time, then I don't see why not. But if they don't, then, uh, then, then they're going to have to say goodbye to their little bodies. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. So, okay. So here's what happens. So they're starting to, uh, they're finally figuring out how to get out from underneath the tent cover. Um, they start to run after their buddies. Uh, Scott, uh, who is a bit of a softie at heart, it doesn't really seem like he should be in this adventure in life, or if he's going to be, he needs to do a much better job finding like, <laughs> like real friends. Yeah. So he holds up, uh, he holds up uh, the tent covers for, so people can get out, so the boy will get out more easily. Um, and as the last one exits, Scott walks with him towards the edge of the ship. Uh, he's looking over the edge of the ship to, uh, uh, to, to, you know, see if they're all safely getting in the rowboats. And then the last Bobby Lug is getting off the ship, grabs Scott, takes him down into the water with him, Scott! drags him into the rowboat, and the remaining I don't know what the math is. I think it's like 17 bully wolves roll off. I don't want to break. I don't want to break character, but I want to save oh, Scott. <laughs> no, Scott. <laughs> Dang it! I'm I'm playing as a Mariel's character, but I want to save him. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? You know what? I'm sure that he will return in the next more low adventure. So let him go. <laughs> All right. So I think at this point we're now down. Nobody died on other, our side. Scott's MIA. So I think that gives us your 10 original crew. We have uh, Dimbalog and Higglebottom, the gnome, the former owner of the Enchanted uh, Circus. We have Mary, the Minotaur, um, the four bandits, Scott's gone, and uh, your trusty friend, uh, Natch. And you also hear a soft whimpering. 
from uh, underneath uh, the deck. Uh, oh, that must be the point deck. Yeah. Is it Kestra? Uh, Kestra. She's from the trainer's band. Oh, uh, no, it is not uh, Kestra. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Alright, so are we going to go and, and, and take off her gag, or, or what? Yeah, take off the gag. Alright, so the, um, okay, so take off the gag, uh, the princess says that her name is uh, Glinda, and uh, she says that she is the princess of, so this is why I'm not going to win it now, uh, What's her uh, the princess. It's Glinda the Princess. Uh, her father is uh, is King Dirid, and King Dirid is the king of. I thought I wrote this down. Maybe it's back in the intro. <laughs> And a partridge in a pear tree. It's pear. Pear? And, and a partridge in a pear tree. You know, I can't see this exactly. Uh, oh, I just screwed up. Her name is not Linda. Her name is actually Princess Lillianne. Blood Princess. Uh, her father is King Darren. Oh, and she's from the Munche Isles. Alright. Well, where's Glenda? I don't want to tell you yet. Dang it. So, um, alright. So, but we don't know anything about this princess. Uh, we want to gag her. Do we want to leave her, uh, like she's basically tied up, you know, got her hands behind her back. She's probably tied up around her best support beam or something like that. Do you think we should uh, leave her there or, or what? By the way, for the record, this isn't how I got the adventure as well. I thought for sure we were going to see the uh, the uh, Yeah. Okay. But I left it open ended. So while you're thinking, let's establish that I feel like this all happened on the first afternoon that we got there. Uh, whatever we decide, well, I don't know what's about to happen next. What is the alignment of our crewmates? Uh, let's just say that they're all neutral. I, I think that your crewmates are going to be loyal to you. Okay. I don't think anybody's going to turn on you. And I don't think that uh, Dimblemog and Hibblebottom or Nair, um, I don't know if they're loyal to you, but right now, um, oh. you know, momentum okay. is going in your side. I think they know a good thing when they see it. Okay. Um, then I will... Then I'll okay. How about I appoint Dim and the and the mayor to uh, to return her to to her to her home and make sure that uh, that if I if I ask the princess to make sure her her father knows that that we were not the one to who stole you from her, who stole her and uh, and that we were the one who rescued her. Okay. All right. Um. So we have that, that pretty much happens the same afternoon that this has all happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, do we, uh, are you, do you want them to leave immediately or are we going to, um, you know, maybe rest and recover overnight and then we can set off on our journey the next day? Let's rest and recover overnight. All right. I agree. And since Nash is the only one who took any damage, He's the one that most appreciates the decision. So, everybody's happy. The crew in the last week or so have gained their freedom. They now have their uh, their ship back. Uh, I'm assuming, uh, do we want to give a speech or, or make any 
discussions about who's in charge? Because technically you weren't previously the captain, but I think we're all assuming at this point, Jelen is just calling the shots, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, she doesn't have to call her or anything, but technically she's still their owners. Oh, that's not, uh, well, yeah. yeah technically. I, I kind of wish that we had, uh, oh, interesting. Well, okay, do you want to give the speech, kind of establish what's going on, yeah. going on? I I didn't know that you still owned them. I thought you had purchased their freedom. So I don't know if they, they know. Well, why, uh, well, um, well, I, I, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. That that she that that kind of automatically makes her the leader, but I don't want to establish that unless I actually have to. All right. Well, yeah. So I think they all. We're just going to say they're thankful. So are they freed or are they not freed? Um, if if they were to run away, let's just say if they were to run away, they would then they would have a better chance of surviving than with with the robot and Sybil not that that um with than with him, but uh, uh but um but. There would still be some people who would be sent after to retrieve right. them. So let, let's put it this way: mm -hmm. they naturally are following you mm -hmm. at this point uh, mm -hmm. because they believe in your abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, they're thankful that you freed them. They're mm -hmm. also a little bit afraid of you, mm -hmm. um, so they're not your slaves per se. Uh, but they're they just they're going to blindly follow you no matter what because they believe mm -hmm. in you. Like I said, they're a little bit afraid. So, Why are they afraid? Huh? Why are they afraid? Uh, because they know you got a bit of a dark side, a bit of a temper. They were pirates. They killed my family. <laughs> well, they were just trying to make their living. Uh, it's, uh... I, I guess they were captured. Yeah. So, uh... Mm -hmm. but, right. but still, the agreement with the government was to was to bring the family to the prison, not uh, not kill them and take over their ship. Yeah. So they're probably maybe also afraid of you for that reason. They're afraid you're going to have revenge. Uh, either way, so we all rest. Uh, hit points are restored. And uh, I think technically I'm supposed to make, I guess, myself roll for that. So I'm just going to say we're restored. I wake up. It's a beautiful morning. Um, and then we hear a flapping of wings. And yes, it is Kronos. He's arrived earlier than expected. Um, and he lands on a, a hill at the edge of the coast. But uh, he's able to hear us and we can hear him quite loudly. So he says, Crew of the Bollywood, I'm sorry, crew of the June plant, do you have what? We have agreed you would bring to me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know quite yet that uh, the crew is is different. So he's expecting. Okay. Okay. So quickly, is there any sort of Oh, the changeling. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. I ordered the changeling to go out there at the bully bug and tell him that the, that there were complications and the and the princess died. The princess died. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, right. all of us are under the ship. Okay. But like, I I whispered to him. Um. Let's do. Let me, let me hear the speech. There were complications in this, and she died. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I better roll a twenty. Oh, if you want to see it. Uh, wait a minute. Why do I have a young red dragon and a young green dragon? Which which one is this guy? He's a red dragon, isn't he? He's young? Come on. Yeah. 
I, I am not well organized in this adventure at all. Uh, I think I actually had it in the intro. The young green dragon is what I have. I have why do I have a red dragon here? Isn't that his evil brother? <laughs> Even more evil than him. So if you want to know, go look at the backside. But that's what a green dragon looks like. I look at the backside. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the green dragon. I could have sworn he was a red dragon. No, I guess it must be green because I even turned up the young green dragon stuff. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see. Let's do. Oh. Okay, I think that, uh, okay. The dragon does not seem convinced. Uh, he would like to see the body, or at least hear an explanation of how the princess died. Mm -hmm. the body or hear an explanation. Uh, I'm kind of speaking for the changing, right? Yes. Okay. You're like, you're like, got the door cracked and the cat is Yeah. Um, um, just as you're about to say something. <laughs> oh no, 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 I've been taking too long to think about it. A new figure emerges from the woods I'm on the coast. And he announces himself as King Derek, the father of the princess. Oh no. <laughs> Says, I believe you all know who I am. And I am here for the return of my daughter. Whatever this dragon has offered you, I will give you a greater reward. And the dragon says, he, he kind of sniffs the air. He says, this is no king. This is Mallory the Green Hag in disguise. And of course, King Darius says, no, I'm King Darius. <laughs> oh, no. What does he look like? Draw me a detailed image. Um, <laughs> he looks kind of old and tired, like me. Looks like he hasn't slept in a while. Um, he is wearing the crown on his head. He's got long hair. Is he uh, being escorted by any sort of Palace guards? That is kind of a weird thing. He, he seems to be by himself, but perhaps he's just, you know, desperate. I, I don't know. I don't know where his guards might be. I believe that he would no, go nowhere with his guards, and I'm going to believe the dragon. Hmm. Um, Corona says, this is no king, and the princess is no princess. The, uh... The hags are trying to reform their coven to grow their power. And Mallory is the sister of Glinda, the green hag, who has disguised herself as a princess. The reason why I wanted the princess 
because I do not want these hags to grow in power. They threaten Can my power. Can you remind me of a green dragon? I don't know who to believe. <laughs> so I ask again, where is the quote-unquote princess? Ah, I don't know who to believe. I'm not allowed to know the alignment of any And King Derek said, this dragon is a liar and has been harassing my kingdom for ages. Please return my, my daughter to me safely. Okay. <laughs> I spent a lot of time putting this together. Okay. Um, That's Josh speaking, by the way, not the dragon. I was kind of curious how to see if it's going. The... Okay. At this point, I feel there is no use in in hiding it. So this guy, so the changing transforms back into a changing instead of the bully log. And Angelus comes out. King Jared seems surprised, but not so much surprising. Okay. Um, By the way, at this point, King Garrett says, Hey, if you kill the dragon, you can take his 2,000 gold pieces, and I will reward you with an additional 1,000. Um, um, <laughs> um, I that you're evil. I your, asked, your player is evil. Your character is evil. I asked the dragon, is there any way for to to is there any way to change a green hag back from their disguised form? You asked the dragon that? Mm hmm mm Hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you not expecting? Uh, like I said, I was I was curious how this adventure was going to go because there was going to be a lot of ad libbing and putting this figure out as we go along. So yeah, I, I don't really know. Uh, I forgot to mention that when Kronos explains that these this princess we captured. Is he's claiming that she's not really a princess, she's actually a green hag named Glinda. Not only does he say that, but he claims that the real princess is dead. Um, I think he'd already claimed that King Deirdre is actually Mallory, right? Uh -huh. uh, and he does mention that because with the coven, you have to have three. Uh, and so the third sister is named Priscilla. Oh, Priscilla, like in Cinderella? Apparently, I know it's a prince, though. Princella. I wonder if I did that on purpose. Oh, it says the, the, that Princella is actually the cousin of the two sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any other information I'm supposed to be giving you? Um, all right, is, is Glinda or, or the princess? Does the, dra does the dragon have a response for me? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I asked him a question. It is very good okay. not to answer. I just want to make sure I give you all the information I'm supposed to give you. Um, Okay, so Kronos suggests there are a couple of things you could try. One is that if you kill a, a green hag who is in disguise, <laughs> they will or she will revert back to her original form. I'm not going to kill her just in case she is a real princess. <laughs> um, also, um, because it is just an illusion, 
then um, the illusion is only visual. So in other words, you could feel their skin and see that the skin is not uh, smooth um, or something like that. So basically, you could touch the, if it is a green hag, you could touch the green hag, and if it doesn't feel like what you're seeing, then that could be a hint. You know, like in other words, if she's disguised her clothes and it's puffy, but what she's really wearing is not puffy, then your hands would go like right through the clothes. Yeah. Okay. I, I looked very different with my eyes and um, he, um, mm -hmm. I mean, not and he, he was just part of the guard. Um, but I asked him to, to. He says, heck no, I won't go. Heck no, I won't go away unless you tell me to. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I was being silly. So you, uh, you're going to tell him to do what? I, I asked him to go and feel. Um, All right. Is she still below deck, by the way? Yes, she is. Okay. So now she's disappeared for a few minutes. Um, she comes back and whispers in your ear. And what he whispers to you is that uh, what we have below is definitely not what she appears to be. Okay. But he hasn't communicated this to anybody else. He didn't tell um, the princess that I asked he doesn't. Um, I asked him if it feels like a green hag or if it is something else. He says that it definitely kind of feels like like the skin feels kind of rough. That it probably would be consistent with what you think of a green hag or what you would see. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> well, I want to know what you have to say next. I like to, I like to smile. Uh, I tell King Manfred to meet Bob. <laughs> I tell King Boo. King Manfred, I mean not Manfred, that's in my book. King Garrett to meet Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Jonathan's thing to where it's a, that says, my name is spelled without you next or whatever. That's <laughs> all. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Do you say anything else? Do you make any threats? about what you're going to do with the, the prisoner, whoever she may be, or are you just tell her? I, um... Go, oh, hey, you warned me that kids wouldn't be watching this. So. <laughs> yeah, that's my to me. Alright. Um, let's see. I, I tell her, to me, boss, I'm handing the princess to the dragon. Hmm. What? He says, oh, he, so King Jerry says, you're making a terrible mistake. Please give me back my daughter. Now we're, now we're going to do it. I'm sure that wasn't super compelling, right? Yeah. But you're still going to have to do something. Are you going to talk to the, the king all day? Are you going to just ignore her? Are you going to bring, you going to bring out Princess Lillian and just hand it to the dragon or, uh, do you announce your intentions of getting No. I, I would say no. No? <laughs> no is the answer to everything, okay? All right, well, we're going to do something to move this forward. I mean, uh, what are we going to do? And I, I, I bring Princess, Princess, what, whoever out. Yeah, to Princess Lillian. Lillian, to the dragon. Okay. And then, and then what do you ask? Do you say anything to the dragon? Right? What? I'd be gay. I'd be gay. Because <laughs> the changeling's gonna talk to for me. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Alright. You want, uh. 
Should we assume Nash is kind of your first mate for the, the time being? Yeah. Whatever right. our first mate is. Alright. <laughs> He's kind of your right hand man. Okay. Uh, you tell Nash to, to take, some, take over from here or what? Oh, come on, this is the fun part. This is the fun part. All right, so we told we told King Derek to. to so we're pretty sure this king is not the king, right? Mm -hmm. You told him an unfriendly word, but he's still hanging around because he he wants his daughter. Uh, and we brought the daughter up on deck, and the intention is to give the daughter to the dragon, right? Mm -hmm. um, the daughter still have is in binds. This is an important detail, by the way. Is she still like handcuffed, basically? Yeah. Okay. So she's up on deck, and actually, I'm gonna write it. actually no, I'm just gonna no because we were gonna rescue her, so she's not in binds. No, uh... I know that this might be bad for it, but. But, I mean, off of realisticness, I don't think she's in binds. Uh, you bring her up on deck. You, you unbind her. She starts to tackle. Okay. And before you stands the green hag, Glinda. Mm -hmm. And in the place of King Derry, is the green hag, uh, Mallory. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say at this point? Uh, so this is a trouble spirit. Yeah, she has both on the way. Mallory says, it is good to see you again, my friend. Thank you for reuniting me with my sister. And they both turn invisible. You hear the pitter patter of feet. And then a second later, a splashing sound in the water. And the dragon is. Dead? Uh, the dragon is. Uh, how do I say this in a kid friendly way? He's very unhappy. It's like, you fools! <laughs> you could have been rich. Well, richer. <laughs> two, two thousand gold pieces is, is not going to sneak out. You got to set some life, right? <laughs> he pauses. It looks like he's thinking about attacking the ship. But instead he just buys away, disgusted. So... Uh, so, uh, he is, I think, chaotic evil. Or no, lawful evil. lawful evil. Wait, he was evil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a matter of him trying to remove somebody who was evil. It was a matter of he didn't want. He wanted to be the big fish in the little sea. Mm -hmm. He was. He was concerned that these green hags that they formed their coven would prove to be a threat to his dominance. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the issue for him. So, uh, so it's kind of silent. Things feel kind of weird. Uh, we just had something super intense, and now we're going to be quiet. But King Derrick, who was actually the green egg. Uh, Can I jump in afterwards? Huh? Can I jump in afterwards? Oh. It has to be noise made by the two footers. True. That's a good point. Um, so with that being said, so are we kind of rewinding a little bit then? I'm trying to decide if the dragon's still around or not. <laughs> I think, I, I guess we're rewinding, I don't know. Alright, so you're trying to capture her, right? Alright, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an athletics step. This feels like an athletics thing to me, right? But, you're trying to capture something that you can't see. Um... But I can still see the You can see the splashing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a general view of that. Yeah, yeah. But so it's going to be difficult to grab something if you can't see it at all. Um, and how do I want to do this? 
I could either have you roll at disadvantage or I could just set a high difficulty. Uh, I prefer disadvantage. You prefer disadvantage? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to set this at. All right. I say let's go for. There's no way you're going to do this. Uh, anyway, you know what? So we're doing a disadvantage. Okay, enough talk. Let's make this. You're going for 15, but you're doing this at disadvantage. So that means both of your rolls have to be. Well, more than 15. What's your athletics? Uh, are, you, are you proficient? Yes, I am. Uh, okay, plus two. And then I think, no, there was no idea in strength. So yeah, just plus two. All right. For both of the rules or just one? You have to get above 15 for both because this is at disadvantage. But like, do I add it to both of the rules? Yes. Okay. First up is a 16 plus two. All right. Second off is a... Oh, look, spider web. I mean, cobweb. I don't think there's spider webs anymore. Five. Five. So it's seven overall. So there was a point where uh, the gentleman could feel, she could feel an ankle in her hands. And uh, it slips but away. But A, the ankle feels totally gross because it's an ankle of a green hag. And <laughs> secondly, it's, it's wet. It's a wet ankle of a green hag. <laughs> so it slips out of her hands. She's frustrated. She sees in the distance uh, a couple of footprints in the sand, but eventually, but they're headed towards the forest, but at some point they disappear completely. And, and uh, Linda has escaped. So, um, yeah, I've got a feeling like that pretty much wraps things up. Um, but you have your ship back. I will say that uh, the Bullywogs had some treasure on the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, because they were not expecting to be leaving so suddenly. Honestly, I think I, I can get over it. I, I can get over this loss because I feel like I feel like what I did was enough to to have a case about about well uh, about well I I tried to I tried to stop them so like I feel like I wouldn't get arrested for that. Right. Well, if, if the by me, which I'm not guaranteeing that they would. Well, and you're evil, and you're on a boat, uh, so I don't know how much you care about the law, but perhaps... Uh, if I can get away with it, then I'll do stuff. But perhaps you may want to ally yourself with the, the, the grown-ups, possibly, at some point, and you can say, hey, I, I was going to give her to you. Now you might go, you have a mature buffoon, and you took her, her uh, you let her go. Uh, but either way, you got your ship and your crew, and those are the two main things you're going for. You also got uh, 2,100 copper pieces, uh, 1,050 silver pieces, mm -hmm. 70 gold pieces. Can I have this in the last one, please? No, no, these, these, this is what the Bullywogs left behind on the ship. Oh, uh, There were seven gems worth 50 gold pieces each, two portions of healing, and a spell scroll with a prayer of healing on it. Dang it, I'm not grabbing a pencil. Hey, but there is so basically we're at the end and there was also treasure that we got from the Mimoth account there, right? Mm -hmm. So we can hit all that stuff. There's a I already yeah, it said gold. I have uh You've also given away some gold to get your crew back. Yeah, yeah, I subtracted all the math that I said done with subtracting, so right. so I have three thousand eight hundred and sixty nine gold. What 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 well, did you say I gained? Well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's tie out on um, treasure and all that stuff off camera. Okay, then. Don't hit it, though. There's an epilogue. Oh, no. Yes. No. There's no epilogue. All right. So, just because uh, the hands were pretending to be something doesn't mean that you open something like this, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here's my epilogue voice. Mm -hmm. The king is astonished by the story he had just heard. His daughter is dead, and has been thus, so, for some time. He methodically works through his emotions, first shock, then confusion, grief, and finally, anger. He dismisses his loyal spies with a soothing calm, but his heart 
is a bundle of rage. There is much he does not yet know, but mark this. King Beery will have his revenge. And that is the official end. It's on me? Wait, he has his revenge on me on that? What? I didn't, I didn't say who was going to have his revenge on him. I left this very open ended. Because the only thing I knew for sure riding this adventure was that his daughter had been dead for some time, that one of the hags had been impersonating his daughter. We don't know for how long. Um, she was captured by the Bullywugs because the green dragon was afraid that, the, that these green hags would form a coven together that would make them more powerful, that would threaten his dominance as the main... Uh, the big bad of this world. Exactly, or at least of this, this neck of the neighborhood. Um, and um, that's about all I knew. So the insinuation is that while King Beard was not actually at the beach while everything was happening oh, here, the spies there. he had spies there. Um, and so I didn't know where this was going to go. I didn't know there was a distinct possibility that we could get to the end of the adventure and we didn't know the truth about the Green Hags, right? What if we all joined forces and fought the dragon together, possibly? I didn't know if we were to just hand them over to the Green Dragon. I didn't know. So I had to go with what did we know on the golden epilogue after that. So this could go in a lot of different directions right now, right? There's a green dragon out there who wants to be the uh, to keep his spot as the main baddie in the area. There are some green hags that are trying to put a coven together, and there's a king who doesn't really know for sure what's going on, but he wants revenge. So there's like three different things that that could that, that you could build the de the next adventure based off of. Right. And okay, can I add a little piece of lore to this? Uh, I guess so. So, whenever her parents died, Jelvik was, whenever her family died, Jelvik was 10, and she had a feeling that uh, that some that some sort of secret was being kept. So the reason she, she wants, um, she wants her, this ship back is because, she, is because it, it has been nagging at her a lot lately, um, and she thinks that there might be a few clues on the ship. Okay. That's just a little thing. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, the other thing, yeah, I, I don't know where this is all going. I think that I want to basically put these together as a series of one shots. That way, I don't have the flexibility of going in a different direction if I wasn't planning it. But we know, even though the focus isn't the war of wealth, but we know because Scott uh, is here that it must be taking place during that period of time. Yeah. So I don't still more going on. Yeah. So I don't know if that's gonna be a factor or not. But we'll see. Alright. Well I mean that's the adventure. My intention is to deal with the treasure and that stuff later. Maybe late maybe later tonight so we don't forget about it. My suggestion is that we end the video. And then go watch Wonka. Yeah, we have a little bit of time. Yeah, no, it's just two thirty one. So maybe I'll I'll get up the kid time. Maybe we can finish the tree or at least get a chunk done. Okay, well, that is it, people. If you want more D&D content, then go check out um, War of Woe Chapter 2. Chapter 1 is not available because I don't even know if I was posting publicly yet. I think I was, but I just didn't think to record. Um, and go watch The June Plant Part 1 if you haven't already, which hopefully as soon as you found out this was a Part 2, you go well, you went and watched Part 1, but hey, who am I to judge? Um, uh, um, but anyway, that is all. Um, so, goodbye. Yes, I want to stop recording. Okay, sorry. I forgot that I added the notification on OBS. Okay, that is all. Goodbye.